Ooh. Got some background noise on that. Yeah, that's fine, but I kind of want to have him over here if we can. Yeah, absolutely. User left your channel. User left your channel. <laughs> oh, okay, I have one of them. User entered your channel. Hey, Mroska, I will try and get the other guys to show up as well. Um, well, in the meantime, Relator, go ask him some questions. Yeah. RE4 guy. Hi, yeah. That's That was an impressive User showing from you guys, channel. first of all, I want to say. I mean, you guys, I think, were User certainly favored channel. as the User underdogs. You know, versus, you know, we know that there were people playing for the other teams in both ends. Who did you bring to the table? Was this, were you bringing a mostly, like, RE4 force? Or did you have some, you know, friends of the outfit join in with you? What did that look like for you? I'm hoping you can talk. Yeah. Uh, yes, it works now. Thank you. Uh, it was all Reapers. That's nice. Yeah, That's we, we don't stack teams. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, certainly you guys have been around long enough and have the numbers, I think, to pull a pure Reapers team. And so I really like to see that you did that. Um, those galaxies. Did you go into this match really thinking that you know, those galaxies were going to be such a staple for this whole match. Like, they were... They just didn't die. They were pretty much a rock for you guys. I don't know. Um, I didn't really expect it, but if you have people that know how to do something really well, and you have tried it on live and it works, then it must work in a like uh, similar fashion. Fair enough, yeah. Um, let's see, some more general questions. Like going into this match, what did you what did you expect to happen? Like who did you expect to win? Where did you expect to place in that? Uh, well, we knew that Red Mist has really good infantry, so mm -hmm. uh, we were planning Connected. for that, and okay. then pretty then pretty much. Um, uh, what was it like a couple hours before the match we figured out that we shouldn't underestimate the Vanu. Sorry, yeah. I forgot the outfit name. <laughs> Urge, yeah. And well then 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 it was quite interesting because uh you have two equal forces and we know we have trained for it, so anything anything could happen. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you guys seem you seem to play a very kind of slow and steady game, never really surging out and picking up way too much territory, but just keeping like a steady, like four or five territories throughout the whole game. Um, was that also kind of part of your opening plan? Uh, definitely. This is another thing that's very similar to life play. If you have three factions and you go into lead, you're most likely to lose the alert because you get double team. Yeah, and I mean, I think we saw that with Urge early on, where they grabbed a ton of territory, and then you and Redmus kind of punished them pretty bad for that and locked them in their warp gate. Um, do you think that played to your advantage, where Redmus seemed so focused on keeping Urge locked in their warp gate? Uh, definitely. I mean, if they would at any point decide to double team us, we would have had a much harder job to do, but. Yeah. Uh, we we had our plan and we were ready. That's fantastic. Looks like we have one of the red mist guys in the team speak now. Can bring him on in. Yep. Hey Mitch, channel. let's me give him some perms so he can actually talk. You could yeah. you congratulations, you're now PSB senior staff. <laughs> For all of a couple minutes. <laughs> so welcome. Uh, we were just chatting with Mosca kind of about how RE4 expected things to go User and how they channel. kind of used some of what happened in the match to their advantage. Mm -hmm. um, from your end, what did you, coming into this match, how did you kind of expect yourself to stack up to the other teams? What did you expect to be the outcome? What we expect to be the outcome? Good question. Um, we expected to be in a hard fight. I uh, Probably the hardest one uh, from all the matches tonight. Yeah, uh, especially for are you four and uh, urge? Uh, we heard that urge got some uh, extra players from mm -hmm. from playing. So uh, we're expe we're expecting a hard fight. 
We were expecting it not to be easy. We tried uh, a, a nice opening strategy. Didn't work out as we wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we picked up uh, mid-game uh, quite well and uh, got second place. Yeah, I mean, it's it was definitely a hard fight for second place there. Neck and neck with Urch for a lot of that. Yeah, um, definitely. Now, we saw Urch kind of pull ahead and, you know, both you and Reapers kind of go for the throw and locking them in their warp gate. Do you think that it was the right move for you guys to focus so hard on that warp gate and um, kind of let Reapers hold their territory? Um, I don't know in hindsight if it was the right move. I, we thought in the match itself it was the right move to mm -hmm. uh, when we saw that Urge pulled ahead in points. Towards the end it uh, came bite us in the back uh, because yeah. of uh, Reapers getting uh, more points, but uh, I think we're happy with how it went. It felt uh, that we were uh, targeted uh, quite uh, hard during mm -hmm. the match, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that was one of the interesting things to watch about this match was there was kind of a shifting... It definitely seemed like Reapers managed to keep the heat off of themselves a lot, but the focus seemed to shift, you know, kind of between you guys and between urge really depending on who reapers was going for at the moment because you were seemed like you were kind of going at urge and urge was going at you the entire match just back and forth back and forth yeah, it's it's like the saying goes two kids were fighting and uh, reapers just got the apple yeah. <laughs> so i have to ask this question mitch were you aware of um the thing urge might want to confess about <laughs> Uh, but we we heard it in the back channels. We didn't want to believe it, but uh, I don't uh, I don't know. Uh, we had we had no ringers. Uh, we only had the guys who played in the qualifiers, so everyone knew who they were up against. And uh, I don't think it's fair to call in so many people in the last moment. But uh, that's just my opinion. It's not the opinion I've missed. True. Yeah. Um, Relter, I've not been uh, paying too much attention to what you just asked, but I'll ask Roska anyway. Um, like, have you guys been waiting, um, like, near the end? I think until, like, 600 points, you guys weren't pushing on the top left. Uh, were you guys waiting to make sure that Urge wouldn't focus too much on you? Mm, it, it wasn't necessarily Urge. It was both actions. Uh, and actually, we were a bit nervous because we took the lead sooner. Than you were than, expecting. Yeah, yeah, than we wanted to. So we we stayed defensive and it worked in the long run. Yeah, I mean that's certainly something we kind of noticed midstream. Is we're like, you know, you guys are taking the lead, but like, is this too early? It seems like you know there's still time for them to get focused. Um, but it seems like you guys pulled that off quite well. Yeah, and I think it was one of the most interesting matches going on because one hand you had like this urge completely dominating then suddenly red mists and re4 both had both half of the map completely covered and then near the end it seems like urge just completely focused on red mist instead and yeah it made re4 being able to although definitely they got attacked in a few times and at the very end actually maybe you already asked this question as well but mitch i saw a red mist drop on a base that you couldn't flip so were you trying to prevent from them to finishing the match like re4 or yeah, pretty much. But yeah, it was a mistake because uh, we heard that uh, we'd be able to flip it, but uh, people couldn't get on the last base uh, in time or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Yeah, did it get pretty hectic at the end because there were, I think, one or two drops where you oh, guys definitely. couldn't even flip? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. It was uh, hectic and uh, on the end we just uh, said, uh, all right, Reapers is going to win, but we're going to get second. Yeah, exactly. Well, that worked out. It was actually pretty close. I was actually curious if Urge was going to be able to get it closer, but it, when Reapers went beyond 720, it was yeah pretty set who was going to be on each position. I'm trying to get one of the people from Urge to show up, but I, they don't have TeamSpeak installed, most of them, so it's going to be a bit tricky if they will actually show up. Mm. Yeah, um... Uh... Very interesting. Um, just this was what definitely one of the closest matches we saw so far all day. Like of the matches that I've streamed so far, the closest one was Saltex Silver, and that still wasn't even like nearly this close. It was you know an impressive show from both sides, and I like definitely would like to hear from Urge on kind of how things went on their end because obviously they were kind of. 
locked in their warp gate for a good amount of that match. Okay, they're still considering it. I'll give them about a minute or two because otherwise we'll turn into some one of those streams that has an interview for an hour. <laughs> Even though I would love to enjoy to hear Brodsko talk more. But... Oh, I can. <laughs> I, I, I just don't want to spam it too much. Um, uh, you just mentioned the uh, Urch being locked in the warp gate. At one point I opened the map and I see the the whole map being red. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, okay, now we kind of need to attack. They're still kind of behind on points, but it, uh, we just have to attack, right? Yeah. There was one late moment where I noticed that essentially every base that you had some form of connection to or owned was flipping. And that, I can imagine that was pretty hectic towards the end. Uh, not necessarily, because I had people on everything. Basically, Air Squad was patrolling, there were a few people making sure nothing gets ghost kept. And okay. uh, what, one of the squad basically had free hands uh, uh, to switch between the bases and defend. No, really well nice. done. Oh, sorry. No, really, really, well done with, really well done with the center bases where you build those uh, pillages, we call them. Pretty cool. Yeah. That was really well done. I was the best. Oh, I think I got buzz right now from my urge coming up. I hope it's the right buzz, so we'll see who's going to shout or... <laughs> well, let me give him some perms. I'm going to give him the wrong perms, just to another altar. Here we go. Hello, buzz. Hello. There you go. Yeah, that's the right buzz, all right. Hi, so... That was an incredible match. We've been talking a bit with Mitch and Mosca here, kind of about how their sides went of this. Um, for you guys, kind of going in, how did you feel like this was going to go? Like, how did you feel you were going to stack up with these <laughs> other teams? It was going to be a tough match. Um, I have to say, I was looking forward to this matchup a lot more than the other brackets. Uh, it looked a lot more close and a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a good fight. We, we bloody enjoyed it. Yeah. I was really enjoying to watch it. It was it was a great match to cast and really fun to watch. Um, obviously, you guys took a very early lead, and that kind of came back to bite you, didn't it? You guys ended up on the back foot a lot. Yeah, I think perhaps the the opening strategy went a little bit too well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it yeah it, it definitely did chase us up uh, towards the end. Yeah, I mean it's it's a memorable thing when you, you know, as a caster you look at the map and one faction doesn't own a single base. You're just like, uh oh, you know. Something's happened here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, they, they, uh, they rightly made us pay for that. Uh, yeah, definitely. And that I think paid off. It, it, your opening strategy almost bit Reapers to a bit, I think, because where they seem, you know, from what we understand from Mosca, they kind of played the long game. They were holding back a lot, and they took the lead a little earlier than they liked. Mm-hmm. Um, so in that way, I think it's interesting that that strategy could have also come back and bite, you know, not just you, but one of your opponents, potentially. It's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating how the, the strategy for one side, especially in the, like, three-way format, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of so unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, and I, admit, you know, I must admit, I'm not a massive fan of doing, like, a three-way fight like this. But at the same time, it also... You know, there is some interesting interplay and strategies like that that can evolve. And I think we see three-way in Outfit Wars works a lot better than three-way on live. Yeah, because all the server smashes we've also seen, like, there, there is a big chance if the teams are just slightly different in quality, that one of them will dominate and that means the match is over. But in this case, there's still the third team that will, you know, be able to just flip everything around because you're focusing on that one team. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly like a lane smash thing where you have the one, the two teams, and if one is like, you know, marginally stronger than the other, you end up with a 6-0 type of thing. Yeah, and I'm 
sorry I have to ask this question, but how much do you think that actually construction has been helping uh, <laughs> win this outfit war? Because there were like two bases in the center down south with RE4 and they were kind of menacing because even the orbital strike that someone threw out did not do too much damage to it. Well, yeah. uh, construction is underestimated a lot because uh, you you barely see good players doing it, do it on life. But when it's done well, it gives you a lot of uh, uh, persistent value. Yeah, because yeah. I think if I'm correct, it Red Mist like used the least because I think I saw a few towers from uh, from Buzz as well, like from an urge, but not from Red Mist. Oh, we didn't put it mostly on. Uh, we had some bases scattered around the map just to pull vehicles from, so we didn't have to pull from the warp gate. But that was pretty much it. We didn't... Uh... I think there was one base where I saw um, yeah. a silo with a, a turret in the base, but uh, and a paint tower maybe, I think, a few mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, the routers... Uh, it was actually surprising, like, sometimes there were routers at bases that had, like, less people, so I'm kind of curious if some of the router play was not always coordinated from most of the teams, actually. Some of them were really good, but there were also like a, a bunch of like ones that had a place, but they were just abandoned. So I was, and then some bases that actually really needed them. So either I was not there in time, so they might have already been destroyed. But did, did any of you guys have more than one router uh, at active at the same time, or was it just like one single team or one per squad? What was your router play in uh, Outfit Wars? We had a couple dedicated router players per squad. Uh... I'm not entirely familiar because I was uh, playing the map game for most of it. Um, but I think, yeah, my understanding was routers were, were quite uh, helpful, but maybe <clears> not not as important as just to be able to get a beacon down on a back cap and then just dropping your whole squad back in. Yeah. I have to say, if. You know, no, go ahead, sorry. I just, my, my only I think, complaint about the match is I don't want to fight against 48 Spitfire turrets. Ever again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very annoying. Oh, that would be. Yeah, I I definitely hope that by the time we get around to June's Outfit Wars, the the auxiliary Spitfire is long gone from the game. Well, maybe they should introduce a Spitfire that can shoot down air because that would have caused some trouble for Reapers right there. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, that. <laughs> And just have, here you go, instead of an auxiliary Spitfire, you can have like a dedicated AV and AA Spitfire in the tactical slot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I did actually see a lot more harassers um, from, like, I know RE4 planned to add more harassers as well. Like, what, what was the balance, if you guys know at least, because, you know, some teams are a bit more independent in between the squads, what they're allowed to pull, or what they are going to pull. But I think there was a lot more harasser play going on. Uh, did you guys think that helped, if you are aware of your vehicle squads, what they did? At least, um, for me, we had dedicated harassers. Uh, I think they were crucial, uh, because the, the base times are so short, you just need to, you need fast vehicles, really. And it's it's fast play, and anything slower than a harasser is, slows your team down a little bit. Um, and then we had uh, harassers... We had harasser crews in each squad that could pull extra harassers if needed, but I'm not really sure if, if they were used in the end much. No, what, what definitely is different, uh, like, I think vehicle play-wise is that there was no one actually, like, dominating a single warp gate vehicles-wise. Like, the other, especially, of course, in the, the gold match, but also in the previous RE4 match, there was actually several cases where you could kind of just pin down the warp gate, but I felt that it didn't actually happen in this one. Yeah, for sure. We just ditched the TR MBT because it's useless in our opinion. <laughs> yeah, I definitely noticed mostly TR wrestlers. I was actually surprised. I, th I, th I saw one or two prowlers, but yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think it has a place in Outfit Wars. No, it's uh, too immobile. And uh, like I saw, there was a uh, Mag Rider on top of a, a point. Oh, perfect. Uh, all of the bases. It was like, okay, that is balanced. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> but balance, ironically though the yeah. i think the mech rider is actually on a pretty big disadvantage in this uh continent because there is a few spots yeah that you can on top of bases yeah. and there's a few hills in the center but everywhere else they cannot hover over those mountains because they're like they're they're so small that they can't hover on top of them so they're kind of mm -hmm. useless in that end okay well 
unless you guys want to do some shout outs to your squads, some people, uh, we're going to wrap it up. So I'll just maybe some closing sentence remarks to each other, maybe. And let's start off with Buzz. Well, thank you very much, Reapers and Redmist, for an amazing fight. We it was it was an experience for our outfit, and we look forward to many again in the future. All right, then, Mitch. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, cool. It was fun to fight. We'll see how it goes in the future. We don't have uh, that many players, but we probably will uh, team up with some uh, other guys and uh, put up a good fight. And Roska, what do you have? Uh, any remarks? Uh, same here. I would like to thank everyone who played and also the people who showed up as reserves, just in case. It also helps. And yeah, it was a great match and we should repeat it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, guys, thank you very much. It was really enjoyable to watch. And um, yeah, Relter, let's actually, can we move? Oh, let's move you guys out. And thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks a lot. Moved out of your channel. I'm just going to close it up a short bit. And let's actually wrap up and grab the timings for the next match. Because I guess Emerald is up next in about one and a half hour. Let me see. Emerald is actually going to be, that's, that's still a ways away. That's... Oh, three it's at eight, half yeah. Hours. So yeah. we've got three and a half hours until Emerald Outfit Wars. Uh, we will be coming back to you. We have coverage for all three brackets. Let me pull this up for you. We're going to have H Halot, Dubness, and myself covering the gold and bronze matches. So at eight, zero UTC and one UTC. And then two casting pairs, both uh, Dr. Psycho and Albank. And Opshax and Arxa will be covering Silver at 030 UTC. That'll be on Planet Side Battles 1 through 3. All right, let's. Yeah, okay, I'll just close the stream here, and then by the time it's closed, it's the minute ended up, and I'll post a link to the schedule so everyone can actually watch and see who's going to be up next on what channel. Thank you guys for watching, and yeah, see you guys in a bunch of hours.